I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Our uh, bishop, Bishop David Graves, was telling a story as he was preaching to those being commissioned and ordained this year at annual conference. He said there was a new pastor appointed to his first church. And the first Sunday came. He took his place on the stage sitting, as they do for the whole service in some churches, and they sang and they prayed. And the time for the sermon came. And he sat there and he stared out at the congregation and he sat there and sat there and sat there and no words passed his lips because he was paralyzed <laughs> and eventually it came for the service to be over and the congregation began to file out of the sanctuary and into the parking lot and the pastor remained sitting there and could see them out the window gathering in the parking lot looking back at the sanctuary and he thought oh no here it comes the call to the district superintendent my ministry at this church is over my ministry is over and one parishioner came back into the sanctuary and walked up to the pastor said pastor we've decided that we're going to come back next week and whether you preach or not we're going to be here, and we want you to be here too. And we're going to come back the Sunday after that, and we're going to come back the Sunday after that. Now, I tell you that story for two reasons. One is not very noble. It's just to make me less nervous because I'm already doing better than that pastor was doing. Here I am behind the pulpit at Robertsdale, and it may not be the best sermon you've ever heard, but we're moving. The, the second reason is to make a point that you might have heard put this way before, and that's that God doesn't always call the qualified. He always qualifies the called. God qualifies the called. And even when you feel unqualified, God's calling anyway. God's calling anyway. And I wonder if we have any anyways in the room this morning. God's calling anyway. Before I go any further, uh, I want to talk to you today about calling, but also want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jonathan Hart, and it is a pleasure to finally meet you. Some of you we've been meeting, and it has been a pleasure. Uh, some of you were meeting for the first time today, and we are so excited. My wife Liz, our children who went to children's uh, church, Noah and Eden, thank you so much for the incredible welcome you've given us, the, uh, the welcome message on the sign that we saw coming home from dinner the other night, the beautiful house that you've given us to live in, and the radical hospitality you've shown us. And let me say how proud I am to already be part of a church that holds hospitality as a core value because it's crucial in any church. It has to be one of our top priorities. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to introduce myself uh, by way of a letter, and I missed the newsletter by like a week, so I can't write again until August, and I wanted to kind of give you some ideas of what to expect, and I've outlined some what I would call pastoral priorities. Uh, I know some of you came in through the narthex, some of you are going to leave that way, others of you are going to leave out this door through the Connection Cove where there's a welcome desk. I've left letters in both places. Please take one, read it, uh, let us get to know each other, and thank you for doing that. I also want to let you get to know me by a sermon series that I'm going to preach starting today. So beginning with today, I'm going to be preaching a four-week sermon series called Life Verses. And I wonder if any of you have any what you would call life verses, verses that you consider uh, significant to your life, maybe that you try to build your life on, or maybe multiple. I, I have and have had many life verses. So over these next weeks, I'm going to share some of mine with you, and I welcome you to share yours with me. But I want to begin with the call of Jeremiah the prophet. And if you have your Bible and want to read with me out of your Bible, you can turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 4 to 10. You can also follow along on the screen, or you can just listen as I share the word of God for us today and let it sink into our minds and our hearts. From the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. Do not say, I am too young, said the Lord. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them, 
for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and he touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I am appointing you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This passage has become very special to me as I understand my calling. Uh, my wife Liz actually gave me a copy of these verses and they're framed and they've been sitting on my office desk and they remind me of who I am and what God has called me to on the days that I'm busy thinking about my anyways. And I wonder when you were called. I wonder when I was called. Was I called on June the 7th, 2017, just a few weeks ago at annual conference, because annual conference concludes every year with the fixing of appointments as the district superintendents read the names of the pastors appointed to new places in the district. Well, funny story, it couldn't have been that day because my name wasn't called. In all of the excitement, the Bay Pines District was reading off the names and they had an old draft and my name was the wrong color and they just skipped right over it. So I had a lot of phone calls of friends wondering where indeed I was going or not going. I said, I don't know, but here I am. So I don't think it was that day. Maybe it was March 20th, 2017, when my Pensacola district superintendent called me to his office and said, Jonathan, we want you to go to Robertsdale. I don't think it was that day because those conversations are always tentative and the Lord can always do something else. Maybe it was back in 2003 when I was on my first mission trip in Juarez, Mexico, when I felt God calling me to full-time pastoral ministry. I was leading a youth group, and I was studying mechanical engineering, and, and I felt led to scrap that and the 10-year plan I had for my life and all of my ambitions. Or maybe it was all the way back to when I was 12, and I was baptized into the body of Christ and the life of the church. Or maybe it was even before that when I was six and I heard the gospel for the first time and believed. Or maybe like Jeremiah, it was before he even formed me in my mother's womb. You know, that reminds me of my favorite psalm, Psalm 139. And if you've never read Psalm 139, I want you to take out your bulletin in the blank space where it says sermon notes. I just want you to write down Psalm 139. Go home today and read it. Do yourself a favor. It speaks of God's intimate knowledge of every single one of us. And in verses 13 and 14, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I, I want to tell you something today that I believe every single one of us are called by God. I believe that there's a calling on all of our lives, and I believe we're all called by God in two ways. The first way is what I would call a general calling, and it's the calling of God on everybody's life to come home. It's the call of grace. It's the call that says before we ever put our faith in God, he puts his grace on us that he is wooing and pursuing us, that he is drawing us back to himself because he desires for every single one of us to be his children and to belong to him and to not do life apart from him. I hear a lot of people say, I found God. I say God found me because before I was ever looking for him, he was at work in my life in very active ways that I wasn't even aware of. I wonder where you were when God called you. In a church this size, like Robertsdale, I'm gonna have the privilege of hearing your story, and one of the things I'm most interested in is to praise my God because he gets mightier every time I hear someone else's story of how he reached them, how he called you to faith in him, how you became his son or his daughter. Before ever worrying about being a servant, God calls each one of us as the calling of grace. The second calling, though, I think is a specific call. So beyond just being his child and, and hearing that call to come home, God invites us to participate in his salvation activity in the world. And we do that in a number of ways. God calls you specifically based on your personality. Did you know that? Now, spouses, just hold it for a moment. 
Your personality is a gift from God, every one of us, okay? Your personality is actually given to you by God so that he can do certain things through you in the world. Also, what you do, your vocation, is part of your calling and the gifts that God has given you. They're all part of what he calls you to do specifically. You know what the disciples were doing when Jesus called him? Anybody know? Many of them were fishing. Matthew wasn't. He was in a tax collector's booth. But when, when he came to Peter and James and John, they were all fishing. And what did Jesus call them to do? Fish, right? Jesus goes up to fishermen, and he says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. That's Matthew 4, 19. Do you think Jesus would have said that if they weren't already fishermen? No. So what are you doing? What are you doing right now? What, what have you been doing in your community, in the world? Do that for Jesus. Do that with Jesus and pray about how he wants to use you in specific ways. I believe we're all called. But when we're called, many of us have an anyway. Jeremiah was, is known as the reluctant prophet because he was reluctant and he gave God excuses of why he couldn't do what God called him to do, right? I resonate with Jeremiah. That's part of why this is one of my life verses because I completely understand giving God reasons why he shouldn't call you. I did. I gave God reasons he shouldn't call me. On the spot, I listed three reasons why this was illegitimate, why I wasn't qualified. And my three reasons, my three anyways, were I have a deathly fear of public speaking. And number two, I have a strong aversion to conflict. And if you've ever been part of any church, you know, right, that it's not always heaven on earth. Sometimes it's finding heaven in the midst of hell on earth. And number three, I have no management skills or experience. Now, why would you think I need management skills or experience? Because ministry's people. If you don't know how to organize people and lead people and work with people and minister alongside people and share your life with other people's life, there's not much hope for you in ministry. But you know what I've found is you have to be really careful giving God your anyways. Because the very things that you lift up as the reasons why you shouldn't do what he's calling you to do are the first strengths that he will begin to develop in you. He'll teach you that stuff first. So be careful when you give God your anyways. I wonder what your anyways are today. Well, I'm retired, God. God's calling anyway. I'm too young. God's calling anyway. I just plain don't want to. God's calling anyway. I don't know how we're going to get there. God's calling anyway. I don't know where we're going to find the resources to do what God's calling us to do. God's calling anyway. I'm filled with despair, depression, depression, discouragement, and doubt. Newsflash, God's calling anyway. And he's not calling when you get out of that stuff. He's calling you in the midst of that stuff, just like he did when the disciples were in the midst of that stuff. That's why we have their stories, and it's such a gift to know that there's a real God calling real people to do real things in this world with him. Are you filled with hurts, habits, and hang-ups? Praise God that he is calling anyway. I've made my choice, and I invite you to join me today. Did you know that I can't be your pastor unless you let me? Really? Many of you have asked, speaking of calling, what to call me. And uh, the reality is, and I mean this sincerely, you can call me whatever you're comfortable with. I know different people have different preferences. If you leave it up to me, I prefer to be called Pastor Jonathan or Jonathan. I want us to be on a first name basis, and I happen to love my name. But also, the word pastor, the reason I prefer it over other titles is because I believe it's the one word that sums up all of what God has called me to be. Do you know the word pastor literally means shepherd? And it's listed in Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13, as one of the roles that Christ has given the church to build it up alongside apostle and prophet and evangelist and teacher. Pastor, it means shepherd. But the reality is, while God has called me and the bishop has appointed me, I can't be your pastor unless you let me. I can be your organizational leader, and there are certain decisions I'm allowed to make without your consent. But I can't shepherd you unless you give me permission. Pastoring is a very personal thing, and so I'm going to be asking a lot of you in these first weeks that we get to know each other. I'm going to be asking for your mercy. 
I'm gonna be asking for a lot of patience and grace as I humbly learn how to be your pastor and be a lead pastor for the first time ever. And I'm wanting to be your pastor if you'll let me. And I hope that we can learn to love each other as we also grow in the love of Christ and, and as we love him by serving others in this world. So this is gonna be an exciting journey and I am so glad to be in it with you. So will you make your choice with me in the midst of all of our anyways to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you that you would call each one of us a son or daughter that by the name of Jesus Christ, we have the right to be called children of God. Lord, I pray that you would reach us with your grace this morning, that if any of us is doubting our value and our worth, we would cast aside all the reasons why you shouldn't want us and instead hear that voice of a loving father speaking over us the same way you spoke over Jesus. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. And in you, I'm well pleased. Lord, I pray that we would answer that call today, that we would accept your grace in a new way. I pray, Lord, that we would answer your specific call, that call that you have for each one of us to participate in what you're doing. Lord, to minister in the world, all of us as ministers. I pray, God, that you would open our hearts and wake us up to the ways that you're already wanting to use us and that we would absolutely surrender and say yes. Here I am, Lord. Send me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.